his ultimate, unfortunate for him. Is he going to pay for it? He is going to get out. Ooh. He is not going to get out. He, <laughs> I think he got killed by a gadget gate. You don't see that very often. What's up, everybody? I'm the Mangoose. You are awesome. And today we're looking at the first week of a planned 12-week competitive series organized by the Paragon, the Overprime Competitive League. Jelly Knees and I cast the game between Royalty and Noko, and it was a pretty damn good match. Hopefully this game sets a precedent for the quality of gameplay we can expect to see in the future. These games will be best of three, and the rule set is posted in their Discord, which I will post below. This was streamed live on Jelly Knees' Twitch channel, which I will also post, along with his HelloFresh code, since Jelly was sponsored by HelloFresh for this stream. Before we get into it, I know that my volume is a little low compared to Jelly during the cast, and I apologize for that, but there's not a lot I can do about it. Like the game if you enjoy it, go check out the competitive Discord, sub for more third-person mobile content, but for now, let's get to the games. Oh, also, real quick, the first draft that they did didn't go through, one of the players wasn't able to pick, so they're just redrafting the same heroes right now. As they did before. They should, yeah, they're still on the same sides, so that shouldn't be a problem. <clears throat> so we should see another Fey and Steel Baron. We've got Grux, Revenant, and... Feng Mao on Team Noko, and Muriel Gadget on Team Royalty. I'm a little more excited to see that Gadget pick now that I've seen the Aurora pick. Oh, and Aurora, that's right, yes. I mean, between those Aurora two, you can able set to up. Wall people in, and yep. her ultimate, freezing them in place. A lot of wombo combo potential right there. Absolutely. Man, I have every instinct just to click a lane now, just because I know I can. <laughs> now, it, it, yes. now, does this give uh, them a little bit of an advantage now that they know what's being picked? You know what I mean? Now they can kind of pick around it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, I don't think so because they're doing the same uh, pick bands, right? But hopefully it'll work out. So we should see a Fey ban here. If they don't ban the Fae, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> <laughs> like, why did we even come out here tonight? <laughs> there we go. Steel coming I, through. I, I like that little uh, effect that they have. I guess it kind of lets you know that they're banned. It just kind of like uh, fizzles out. Jitters in and out. Yeah. yeah. There it is. There's the steel ban. I was very, very surprised not to see uh, Muriel first pick. A hundred percent. It's uh, wild not to first pick Muriel in this case, I think. She's one of the better supports, definitely in the late game. She just absolutely can keep people alive. There's nothing worse than having a Muriel on the enemy team and just being like, I can't kill anybody. It won't let me. Like, <laughs> uh, Wait, her ulti. thing. not going to be able to pick again? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, I, for a second, I was like, Sparrow support? What? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot they could trade. All right, we're good. <laughs> so it's shaping up to be a, uh, a high damage team for Noko and uh, a, a Wombo Combo potential team for royalty here. Yeah, I mean, there's a, like I said before, there's a lot of individual play that can be done on Team Noko's side, whereas Team Royalty really is going to have to coordinate as a team to perform really well. Yeah, I uh, like that Narbash pick. Narbash, brilliant. Basically the only real answer to Muriel in this case, because he's able to keep his team up on Ooh. health and keep them alive. But Kalari in the jungle. We have Aurora as the main tank for team royalty, as well as Muriel kind of helping provide that. Ooh, new Muriel skin, let's go. And then for team Noko, we have many tanks. Uh, but a lot of individual team damage or individual player damage as well. So it should be very interesting to watch these games play out and see how they go. So I, the Kalari I don't, doesn't seem to fit into what it looks like they're trying to do with that team comp to me. I, I actually agree with you, Mangus. I think that Kalari's going to have a really hard time bursting people down on Team Noko's side, aside from the Revenant potentially. Uh, and with her whole team coordinating on that team pick, it's going to be really interesting to see. And welcome to game one of the uh, competitive league for Paragon the Overprime. Got our new announcing board up there, guys. All right, let's see. Teams look like they are just going to... Yeah, look, let's see if we see any cheeky invades. I kind of doubt it. 
Usually the, the higher rank you go, the less you see these invades. People just it, it kind of come to, uh, like we saw the gentleman's agreement there at first, where they were trying to, you know, stick to only one smite. It's sort of a gentleman's agreement that you just don't invade each other's jungle anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. Now we see the mid laner squared off in the mid lane. Now I, I kind of expected this as uh, it has become less and less important. But important as I say that, it looks like they, they might be actually invading <laughs> this red. But it's become less important to leash for your jungler as a uh, as a mid laner uh, because you will lose minions because they move so fast now and they deal so much damage. Yeah, absolutely. So it looks like they, they might be setting up. Try, they're, they're looking for this steal. He's going for it. He's going for the steal. The early game steal. The, the knife from Kalari lands, though. And Howitzer's pinging it off of the gadget. They're going to square off here. He's with a mine on his head. Takes that mine damage. Cowets are leaping in. And there's not much of a rotation here. We Ooh. got the solo laners going in. He does manage to get it. They will take out Rom King on the level one invade into the jungle. Sparrow has to flash. Revenant and Howitz are both blinking as well. Sparrow's going to be very low and go down. There's two kills for Team Noko. Three kills for Team Noko. down as well. Absolutely incredible invade. Incredible invade from Team Noko there. You don't often see an invade go that well. That's funny how I was talking about, oh, they're going to respect each other, not invade. <laughs> Boom. Big invade into the red. A great Smash dodge. Grab dodge by Aurora. Very nice ice clone from her. Yeah, absolutely. We see actually back in the red side jungle for Team Royalty that the Feng Mao was getting engaged on, but had to get out of there. So far, three kills for Team Noko. Just an absolutely incredible lead to be building up. And Clara just had to go back onto her blue since her red is uh, over there. Oh, actually, we're going to see something interesting happening on the blue side of the jungle here. Kalari going over to the uh, solo lane, trying to help out her Aurora. But Feng Mao is in his red side jungle. There's a potential that he can catch up there. Let's see. She does not Ooh, land the nice dash in. And he blinks out, but will survive nevertheless. Feng Mao now coming in from the the red side jungle for Team Noko. Trying to get engaged on. Let's see if they can make something happen here. The root does oh, go out. Aurora, Ooh. Aurora root. And yep, there's another flash out. This Kalari is very good at landing these daggers, but um that that, that jungle invade is gonna put her behind. She's um she, I mean, she went into that level two into level three. You know what I mean? Absolutely. If Yeah, if she had the levels up and maybe even her red buff, then that would have been a very different story. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. But it looks like the duo lane is backing for Team Noko, trying to keep their lead pressed up. And Feng Mao back in his jungle, farming out. Watch it tab for me. Let's see what their starter items are. Yep, we see a bunch of green gems. That's what I was expecting to see. <laughs> <laughs> green gem is just so effective. That 50 health shield that comes back up when you're out of combat is just incredible. It's very helpful if you're um, I'm coming from a mid laner's perspective, like a wraith or a gadget that's very annoying with their uh, with their poke. Uh, it's very nice to have that green gem to soak up a little bit of that damage. Now, uh, Gadget's very low on mana, and Howitzer, um, she has lane priority, but Howitzer has full mana, and he's going to rush in. And it looks like they're going to get another kill on Muriel. Nice tower dive coming from Easy, uh, uh, from uh, Expect on uh, Narbash. Yeah, and that was actually a double. They did pick up the Sparrow and the Muriel there, which is going to give this Revenant two kills and three assists going into four minutes and 30 seconds for Team Noko. Team Noko Oof. just absolutely starting this game out on a great foot. But there's still two more games after this, potentially, guys. Best of three. So it, just because they're starting out with an early lead this game does not mean it's just in their hands. And they can adjust and come back later if uh, adjust to the tactics that are being brought in by uh, Noko. And like I said earlier, Noko is the uh, winner of several fault tournaments. And the, and the skills do translate. Nice. Mine from how should be a good kill. Bam. Save him. No, it is not. We see that the dual lane is coming in though to this mid lane on Kalari. Can Kalari get make it out of there? Going into sprint mode, gonna Blaine's go in Viz. Hopefully, we'll make it out of there. This is a very dangerous move for oh, her to be making. Narbash Ooh, taking a lot of damage and will indeed go down. We're gonna go onto the gadget now. <laughs> Three people in the mid lane Feng Mao, Revenant, and Narbash. Gadget already half health. Yeah, Kalari re engaging there was a weird choice for sure. Yeah, Daddy Bash was having none of that. He was like, oh, you <laughs> want to go back in? Here's a drumstick to the face. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. 
Uh, yeah, you got to be aware that that Revenant is so far ahead right now. He's going to be doing so much damage. Yep. Um, yeah. And with I mean, the Narbash thunk to back him up. Oh. Between two kills and four assists, Revenant is absolutely doing really well. Has already picked up the Giant's Dagger and a Plasma Cutter. While Sparrow, on the other hand, is just getting her Wind Element Collector. So she's got attack speed and he's just got full scale damage. Let's check out this dual lane, see what's going on over here. Level four to level four. So the levels are relatively even, but we've got Fegmao and Narbash coming in from the jungle side. They're getting spotted on the wards, but can they still make something happen? And that's something that uh, I've, I've definitely seen come into effect in the game is the changes. They decrease the amount of XP you gain from kills and assists. Mm -hmm. So even you can be way ahead in kills and still be, you know, same level as your opponent, which is really weird. It's really odd to me. <laughs> of course, you will have far more gold and an item advantage on them, but it's, it's just uh, it's a weird thing to me. And they're invading this jungle once again. Merciless. Noko is just being merciless. Muriel just stepping up a little bit too Ooh. far and gets locked down by all three members of Team Noko and will go down again, giving Revenant another kill to under his Shade belt. Full obliterate. Kalari's nice. going to get stunned. Narbash, Narbash just running her off the map. They just want this red buff. Kalari, they don't want her to farm. If you can keep a Kalari behind, you keep her out of the game. So making sure she can't get any camps, she's not getting any kills is going to be very, very beneficial. Sparrow stepping up a, potentially a little bit too far here. Narbash does have cool. a great thunk opportunity. And does he take it? He misses the thunk, unfortunately, but still, Sparrow still takes about half health in damage. That full obliterate does so much damage. If you position well, that's the key is you got to position well for it. Aurora seems to be doing quite well in this off lane against Grux. Aurora just very slippery. You can't really lock her down too too much, but uh, she's not going to do a whole hell of a lot of damage, I wouldn't think. Ooh, great ultimate the smash coming nice from ultimate. him. Let's see just, if he's going to tower dive this. He will not. Aurora is going to be able to. I was just talking her up. <laughs> but here comes but Kalari. Kalari's coming in. Let's see if they can make something happen here. Kalari going to make level sure. Five into a level seven Grux. Grux is going to have to. Ooh, Kalari out, did hit level did. six from those minions though. Will be able to pick up the Grux kill. Fantastic play from that Kalari. Perfect timing on that level six too. I do like that this Kalari is sticking in it and not backing down. Like, uh, it, she, she ain't no pussy. She's, she's staying in there. Like even the, that Narbash, she was going back and re-engaging a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we definitely have a brave Kalari here. Just she's a little bit behind on the farm. <coughs> so we'll have to see in this next game. Um, I mean, we, we don't know who's gonna win this one, but uh, I, I definitely think that we will see a, a little more reaction to an invade. I don't know if they'll even invade next time, but if they do, I think uh, I think Royalty is going to be prepared for it. Narbash way out in front, but uh, he does have that healing. Aurora ice walling into the uh, gadget ultimate, and Kalari picks up a kill on Narbash. And there comes the wow. Aurora ultimate. This team, they, their team fight. Okay, okay. Royalty perking up here. They're, they did exactly what we thought they would do with that ice wall and the gadget ultimate and then the uh, the Aurora ultimate while the gadget ultimate was still going. They're tr they're fighting over this uh, this prime. Let's see if they can get it. Kalari may be picking up another kill here. Nope. She's getting knocked. She, this Kalari is very brave. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, this is a 3v5 on this pit, but Narbash and Howitzer have respawned, meaning that they're coming into this fight very fresh, but they're getting picked off. Feng Mao is able to go in and pick up two kills. May go down here for it, but let's see if he's able to make something happen. Looks like yeah, we will see like Prime Underling go down here. Go to no -go. And perfect job of the Revenant is chasing them off. And uh, Prime Underling now down and given to Team Noko. Uh, that was an excellent team fight. Um... Uh, royalty kind of they, they 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 pulled their strategy off the the strategy that we figured that they would be trying but um it was just the the respawn timers are a little too short this early into the match and noko was able to get back in there and secure that with uh they, they i mean they have like like we were talking a lot of individual fight capability and that thing mal was able to pick up two kills just very easily yeah absolutely and that's the thing that the team royalty really needs to be aware of is if fights go that way and you kill two team members but you're low it's going to be better to just to reset at that point. You need those health bars, especially early game. When these team members come back up from Team Noko, they're going to come back with a vengeance and more items. Now, see if we can Kalari make something happen here. The lane. Lays the dagger, lays the, the jump in. Nice knockaway mine. 
from Houser. He does get a gadget mine on top of his head and rooted from it. Now we can't see the you, you you can see the flashing portraits up there that indicates that they do have their ultimate available. So it looks like pretty much everybody has their ultimate available right now. <laughs> except for yep. Muriel. We see that the Aurora has already picked up her uh Jimmy's toy items, starting items, the Cetrica mask, which does the damage around her in an area, which is a brilliant first item on Aurora. Let's her deal a lot of damage and get out of there. But we're going to see on the other side of the map a prime spirit being taken. It will be Earth Spirit. Now, with the most recent patch, this means that this will be Earth Spirit the entire game. So every time you get a spirit, you're going to gain 5% armor and magical resist permanently. And it's just going to be a very, very good thing. But we're going to see Ooh, Revenant get picked off by Kalari. Kalari doing a great job of taking out those targets. And they use the uh, the prime underling to secure the, uh, the Guardian. Which if is a brilliant play. His ultimate, unfortunate for him. Is he going to pay for it? He is going to get out. Ooh. He is not going to get out. He, <laughs> I think he got killed by a gadget gate. You don't see that very often. No, not at all. Gadget but that's up a double kill. Picks now, up the kill. Three members and... down for Team Noko. They didn't actually. They did not secure with Prime Spirit with the Mini Prime. Uh, unfortunately, they actually did still lose that to Team Royalty. So oh, Royalty picks okay, up three okay. kills and a Prime Spirit there. Like I was saying before, that gives them five percent armor and magical resist permanently for the rest of the game. So this is going to make them a lot tankier, a lot faster. That would have been great for Noko with the team comp that they have. That one uh, hundred that Grux and that Feng Mal a little more tankier would have been excellent for them. And they end up, even though Noko dropped the Prime Underling, it's Royalty that picks up a tower. Yeah, and that Prime Underling only got about half health down on that left lane tower or the dual lane tower. So it didn't really net them anything. They didn't secure the objective. They didn't get a tower with it. They didn't get any kills. They actually lost a lot more than they gained by getting that by dropping that prime underling. So uh, the chat's making a comment about prime spirit. So prime spirit does give a temporary buff. The temporary buff goes on to your minions and on to enemy towers or a debuff onto enemy towers. Minions are stronger and they take less damage and enemy towers are weaker and deal less damage. So the, that's just the temporary effect. And then there is a permanent stacking effect. If we hit the tab button, you can see here that you can get the permanent stacks just up at the top of your tab menu that tell you exactly what it's doing for that team. A lot of people don't realize that because the message does say temporary effect. Ooh. Sparrow in a lot of trouble. Is she going to get ulted? She he did get blinked out of there. Out. Yeah, it was a good call from her. Uh, Muriel just now hitting six. Thing Mal was looking to come in and take advantage of that. Noko just forcing their way through that tower. They're going to have to back up now, though. Looks well, like, though, they're going to be able to take this to tower Grux. down. We can shift over to Kalari's view. Looks like she's making a move on to Grux as he was trying to Ooh, take that Grux green. is able to get through and the portal, though. Out. They did take that dual lane tower, so now we have four in the right lane. This should open up a good opportunity, though, for Kalari and Aurora to push this solo lane out and try maybe get this tower. It looks like Kalari's just going to go invade instead. Very dangerous, considering that the members have already backed and Howitzer's going in. They know full well that Kalari's in there. This could turn very bad for her very quickly. Let's hope she can uh, invis and run away. Whoa. Oh, that uh, smash and grab. And she will take the portal. Oh, Narbash cuts off the no, portal Narbash! from her. Narbash! Narbash with the play. Oh, my God. And the stun. And Clary, she's doing everything she can to deal as much damage as, as she can before she goes down. But that was a foregone conclusion as soon as she run into that big, fat Narbash coming, <laughs> coming the other way through the portal. That What a play right there. Absolutely incredible teamwork from Team Noko there. Making sure to block off her only escape route and then be able to pick up the kill then thereafter. Absolutely incredible. Again, though, I do like how the Kalari stuck in there and fought it out. It looks yeah. like Aurora is going to try and use her ultimate to lock them down, keep them inside this tower. But this tower looks like it may be going down, and it does go down indeed. I don't think they're going to pick up a kill on the Aurora, though, unless she sticks around too long. She is very slippery. Yep, absolutely. That is two towers for Team Noko and one tower for Team Royalty. Ooh, looks like Aurora's going to try and stop some backs here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. We got the full five members of Team Royalty out, of out on the right side of the map, though. Looks like Kalari's going on to that prime underling. 
We'll have to see how this benefits them. <clears throat> if they're able to pick it up or if we're going to see Team Fig Noko Mal come in. Fig Mal is watching them do this. He might be trying to come in and smite steal Ooh, it. And he did smite and steal it. Feng Mao able to steal away the prime underling and take it away from Team Royalty. That will be the is second one. Is he die for it? <clears throat> no. He, he, oh, nice. Ultimate from Fig Mao. This, this glory is nuts. This glory is really good. It's just in a bad situation. Just behind from the beginning. I think if this Kalari was just a little bit more ahead, she'd be doing a lot more work. But... Uh, still a very good team fight here. Absolutely. We're going to see potentially this howitzer go down to Team Royalty. Easy Ed trying to go in there and make something happen. But this is a very interesting team fight. There are a lot of dangers here. A Revenant able to go into his ultimate and pick up a kill on the Muriel. But will they will lose both Narbash and Grux. Now it is just Revenant on his own. 1v3. But uh, oh, Aurora, Aurora blocks her team, no off. team off. Oh, no. You hate to see it. You hate to see it. And we're going to see. Is that portal available? The portal is available. And he's going to slip out of there. No problem. Perfect. He did wait to see if the team was going to come for him, and they did. But uh, <laughs> incredible, again, play from Team Royalty here. They pick up three kills. They did lose the Prime Underling, but if Team Noko uses it anything like last time, that won't make too much of a difference. I need to freshen up. Hopefully we can see him capitalize on it a little bit more. Maybe uh, for force the whole team in there. The Prime Spirit has spawned. We got us another Earth Spirit, of course. Looks like we're going to see these teams group around that Prime Spirit. Feng Mao coming up. This is the second Prime Spirit, which would mean if that Team Royalty picks it up, they will get a 10% armor and magic resist increase throughout the rest of the game, which is, I mean, it scales really, really well. And Ward's going down all over the place. This glory has no chance of not being seen. But Revenant she gets caught almost out. picks up the Revenant, Al but not quite. Kalari killed. will take a lot of damage, go down to the Feng Mao. Feng Mao is trying to get out of there. Revenant also trying to get out, but will take a gadget mine to the face and go down. Sparrow now behind enemy lines, getting caught up by Feng Mao and Narbash. Feng Mao misses the ultimate. Sparrow now landing hers, trying to get a lot of movement speed to get out of there. Gadget nice coming through finesse. perfectly. Comes out. Grux picks up a Muriel like kill. Sparrow the the he will does. go down. Can Grux make something happen? This mid lane, mid lane tower for Team Royalty is still up. Aurora, beautiful ice wall able to get her team out of there but it is still a 2v4 going into this prime spirit so they will have I'm to really defend surprised at how long that sparrow stayed alive in that fight yeah absolutely the, the interesting thing here is we're going to see gadget without an ultimate able to do anything in this fight no ultimate no mana not going to be able to do a lot here we're going to have to see if anything can happen feng mao coming around the whole team's grouping back up kalari stops the feng mao Ooh, does a lot of damage to him very good job there prime spirit is down to about half health can something happen? Ooh, oh. they risked it again. They missed the drop kill, but got the smite off on it. It is one to one on that prime spirit. Kalari that, trying her best. Ooh, two thousand damage to that thing. So uh, that's when you want to do it up. It looks like Revenant put somebody in the heck realm. It was Kalari, and Kalari's going to walk away from that. She managed to get away just barely. Uh, once again, though, that mini prime. It didn't execute the Prime Spirit. They actually had to use their smite for that. And it didn't get a tower. The main thing that Mini Prime is being used for is just to secure that Prime Spirit. And they've now used two of them and have not got a single objective from it. And that's all they're going to get too because it's going to be turning into the Major Prime here in just a few, uh, 45 seconds. Let's see if Kalar can get a little more ahead here. right looks like we're setting up around that major prime here they know it's coming up very very soon so they want to be sure that they can do it but we're going to see a battle oh, taken off moving in on and aurora is very low revenant dealing a lot of damage she does slide on out at a nice angle to block him off but Oof. looks like she's going down so much damage coming out of that revenant absolutely that is now four members on the left on the solo lane for Team Noko, Kalari and Muriel running through the jungle and unsure of what to do here. They might get picked off as the team is chasing them down. Let's see if anyone can stop this Muriel. Gadget also hanging around in that mid lane. But now they can get caught up by the Howitzer as well. They still do have their mid lane tower up. So they can run to safety a little bit here. But that's five members for Team Noko in the mid lane. No, that might be a bit of a missed opportunity for Noko. They they may have been able to take Prime off of that, but instead they uh, kind of pursued people through the jungle. They did, of course, only have Aurora down in that situation. 
Sparrow so actually probably... takes the portal across from dual lane to solo lane, seeing the whole team rotate over towards her. She's going to have to clear these minions. Narbash now warding out the prime spear or prime guardian. Um, so we're going to be very curious to see if some play begins around the prime guardian here. Noko, though, doing a fantastic job of keeping these lanes pushed. We saw the Revenant just push out the duo lane. The solo lane got pushed out by all five members. And we're now seeing them push out the mid lane a little bit. If that way, they have the lane advantage going into a bigger objective fight like Prime Guardian. Great question. We've got <laughs> two smites on the side of Team Royalty and two smites on the side of Team Noko. It's just a bit of a ward war right now. And, uh, see, I think they should change that. I don't think you should be able to put a ward up the Prime's ass like that <laughs> so that you have to hit him in order to deward it. I think that should, uh, that's something that uh, Predecessor does that I enjoy. Um, don't I don't enjoy everything about Predecessor, but that's one thing I definitely agree with is that you can't just put a ward in place like that. Kalari coming in from behind. Is she going to get a kill? She does not. She gets popped back by how it's her mind. Ooh, and will go down here. Ooh, brilliant gadget ult, though, dropping it on four members of Team Noko. And Sparrow came in spraying with her ultimate, but Narbash already healing the backup as if that ultimate never happened. How it's her very, very low coming back into this fight for what reason? Sparrow coming around the backside does pick up the kill. Muriel's ulting the Sparrow now. Sparrow into the Revenant ult. Revenant going to kill Sparrow. Muriel now caught out from her team. Going to take a lot of damage from this Feng Mao. Feng Mao picks up the kill. Aurora trying to block off the team now. That is four members to two on these teams. Let's see if they're going to pick up another kill on Aurora. They do. That is four to one. Kalari now, now respawning, but we're probably going to see this. Yeah, Prime absolutely gets started here. Gadget backing off with no mana. It is going to be Kalari versus all of Team Noko minus Howitzer. And Narbash also has no mana, um, so he's not going to be able to heal them up through this. This might be an opportunity for Kalari to clean up. Ooh, Kalari is going in. Can she make something happen here? Ooh, which team got it? Team Noko nope. does pick it up and pick up Noko the Kalari does. right there oh, after. Like, it's a good try from Kalari. Good try. Got to respect it. Yeah, I mean, for her team, that was the best thing she could do right there. They did not really get anything for it. They damaged the inhibitors. They damaged that mid lane tower. Mid lane tower is still standing, though. So the, in terms of where the game goes from here, there's still a lot of opportunity for both of these teams, even with that prime being taken. Now we got Gadget and Howitzer in the mid lane. We're, we're at the part of the game where it's, uh, you can't just push too far forward because any pick is going to matter. A absolutely. Any pick turns into an objective take, whether that be Prime Spirit or Prime Guardian. So you really have to be careful here. We've got three members of Team Noko coming in on Muriel and Sparrow. Sparrow and Muriel have no tower, so they cannot get caught out here. Narbash throws a thunk, does not connect with it. Muriel now trying to run through the jungle, but gets picked up by Feng Mao. Feng Mao will pick up that kill. No way. Gadget now in the mid lane trying to poke people off, but this Prime Spirit is going to spawn any moment here. Gadget really needs to get out of here. Root onto the Grux, and Gadget's backing up to her tower. Looks like we will see... Everybody heading on to that Prime Spirit, though. She's Kinoko. making extremely effective use of her gates <laughs> as a damage <laughs> or, a, or, or a disruption tool. Absolutely. We're going to see Gadget now coming in here, see if she can make something happen. A great ultimate. Who's going to get it? It will be Team Noko picking up that third Prime Spirit. So that's two for them and one for Royalty. And uh, like we said, I think it's going. I think that that Earth Spirit benefits Royal uh, Noko a bit more than it would benefit Royalty. So it'd be nice for Royalty to steal those away. But um, I mean, Gadget it, it, absolutely it, it, tried her best in that, dropping the she ultimate did, right on did. top of it. Brilliant idea from her. Let's see what's going to happen between these two teams here. Sparrow ulting in already. Narbash ulting in as well. Narbash landing a brilliant two not man knockup. But Kalari going into the back line, getting on to. This Revenant, Revenant will go down. Kalari trying to get out of there. We're going to see Narbash running at the Kalari. Kalari goes down. Now, Feng Mao and Narbash trying to work on this Aurora. While Muriel and Gadget are trying to get out, Aurora will go down. Unfortunately, nothing to do there for her. But in the mid lane, we see Howitzer making a brilliant time, taking this time to push down this mid tower. And that's a brilliant play from them. Able to fight on two fronts and gain a lot of advantage in this game. 
see the, the towers cry in purple tears is because it's uh it's a little weaker than normal so it'll be a little easier for houser to pick up that uh that tower and they're pushing right under the inhib and they took that inhib no problem looks like they're going to take mid inhib too if they clear out the minions but royalty is respawned and are respawning responding oh very low on that second mid inhib Let's see, are they going to be able to take it? It looks like EZ Ed uh, will like go maybe, down. Yeah, maybe a little bit of miscommunication on Noko's part. EZ Ed stayed in there just a little bit longer than his team. But uh, that will allow them to escape. But it looks like they're being chased down. Team Royalty does not want to give an inch. Howitzer are getting picked off. Going to take a lot of damage, have to ult in order to stay out of it. But Sparrow able to right click him down. Brilliant play from the Sparrow over there. Let's see, Feng Mao getting caught out now. Feng Mao. Is going to help assist in the kill of Kalari. Brilliant turn of events for everybody. Sparrow now going to get caught out. Can she make it something happen here? Her ult going out there, trying to deal damage to Feng Mao. Feng Mao will try an ultimate, but will not connect with the Sparrow. Feng, Feng Mao absolutely low, trying. Aurora. Uh, Aurora stuck on the wall, it looks like. <laughs> Putting up a wall to try and block it off, but it's not quite working in her favor. Let's see if Revenant can pick up another kill here. Brilliant ult from the Revenant, oh, able to root into the there and take her out. Oh, did she explode into the little icicles there? What happened? Did you see that? <laughs> I did. Well, Revenant trying to get out of there. Healing coming out from the Narbash. Again, this mid inhibitor is basically a sneeze away. They just need to get some minions under there. There it is. Mid inhibitor going down. Easy Ed back on Grex where he just died trying to show that he can provide his team some he, support. He'd add it up. He'd add it up. He'd be like, you know what? Fuck this tower. This inhibitor, <laughs> I'm taking it. <laughs> All right. Oh, in the jungle, we've got Muriel and Gadget trying to do make something happen. Ooh, can we see something? At Root going out onto the Revenant. Revenant having to blink out. Can Kalari catch back up? Mine's coming out from Howitzer to try and defend Kalari. Invis trying to get around. Will get the Root off on that Revenant, but can Revenant stay alive he will not kalari or gadget picks up the kill on to revenant another ultimate. what's this cooldown reduction like man this this kalari is uh one brave little toaster i'll tell you what <laughs> she is lading these daggers like mad absolutely man, kalari, like, like 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 she's great stuff just, <laughs> just full w keying in <laughs> we've got the full five mana team royalty in the mid lane here but if we look over in the solo lane grux absolutely pushing into this left inhibitor aurora trying to come there and combat him a little bit will she get there in enough time half the inhibitor will go down but grux will leave knowing the entire enemy team is on the way kalari the brave little toaster making her way in to get this grux but grux is going to get caught out lots of damage coming out ultimate everything going out team will pick up the grux but now we got fake mal showing up fake mal just does get rooted and uh stunned into place kalari, kalari able to make an escape low. with her q Feng Mao won't be able to... Oh, Feng Mao picks up the Kalari by a brilliant oh, Reaping oh. Dash. But Feng Mao will go down here, it looks like. Oh, no, maybe, maybe not. not. He's no. got a lot of shielding still. Can he make it? He will not. Aurora picks up a kill on Feng Mao. Howitzer now being caught out with Revenant. Narbash coming in. Howitzer will go down. But Howitzer picks up the Muriel in the meantime. Revenant trying to get in this nice fight. Fade away rocket there to pick <laughs> up that kill as he's going down. That's the way you do it. If you're going to die, do as much as you can before you die. Don't just stay in there. <laughs> Absolutely. Incredible gameplay from both of these teams so far. We do have two inhibitors down on Team Royalty, but that doesn't mean that they've given up by any stretch. They're still fighting for this game just as much as they were at the very beginning. Yeah, back to the garage. How many smites now? I think still, still just two per team. Right. Yep, we're looking at one for the solo lane, one for the duo, or for jungle. One for the jungle, one for the solo lane. That seems to be the um, the way the game's played anymore. I know some people will go with three smites, <laughs> but uh, for the most part, you see two smites. Uh, they, they did say, not the not this patch, but probably next patch, there will be some smite changes, so I don't know how they're going to do that. Uh, maybe they'll see, Aurora's going to get picked up on a ward. De warding now. Team Noko is trying to keep some guard onto this prime or prime guardian. Let's see. Ooh, damage going out from both teams. Team Noko just trying to keep control on the team royalty side of the map. Make sure they can't step up. They can't start the guardian because if we look at their base, they actually are taking core damage now from minions pushing in from both mid and the duo lanes. So Team Noko just needs to keep them busy. Fast. 
65% on that core. Lots of minions underneath it. They will pick up a kill on that Feng Mao. Sparrow is going to go down though. Sparrow, ooh, Sparrow barely surviving, blinking out. Can she make oh, it? No, she oh, doesn't. She, oh, she, <laughs> she got caught by the howitzer. Lots of kills going out. Revenant going to be very low coming into this fight. Nobody has backed yet though for their base. Their base is still being destroyed. They took an in, uh, yep, they retook the duo lane inhibitor. Grux not being able to land that pull, but they will four man run onto that prime guardian. And this is going to probably take it down to 1%. Yeah, the, absolutely. The, the core can, the, the prime guardian can no longer kill the core with one shot, but it can bring it to 1%, which means anybody can walk up and smack it once and it'll die. And there's no contest on this prime. So you're absolutely right, Mangus. This will drop it down. There it is to 1%. It will also take the solo lane inhibitor, which means now all three inhibitors are down. And now all Team Noko needs to do is run in there, hit the core once with any character, and they will win this game. It looks like they're all backing the setup for that. Is this going to be the, the, the kamikaze run into the core? Because I've seen that backfire. <laughs> I've seen that backfire and, and, and teams lose because of it. Absolutely. But, uh, uh, the good thing for Team Noko is they do actually still have their solo and duo lane towers. So they, if they had to push and end the game, Team Royalty has to do it through the mid lane. They don't have anywhere else. But with all three lanes pushing into them, it's going to be very difficult. We're now seeing the Prime Spirit go down very, very quickly. Oh, that's a little cheeky to take the Spirit on the way. <laughs> Get that 15%. It looks like Secret been activated to give them that uh, move of speed. But that 15% armor and magic resist increase now from that Prime Spirit that they've received. Wow, just absolutely blowing up that Aurora. The tank on Team Royalty's side. Oh, but Sparrow doing a lot of damage, nice. taking out two oh, members, three members. Can they do a fourth? Royalty doing a great job. Four Holy members down. Shit. Feng Mao, it, 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 triple Mao's kill. Like, I, I, okay, I gotta go. He's like, I gotta go. He, he knows. Oh, no. No, no. He got rooted. And he got a gadget mine. Oh my god! They defended, they successfully defended with the core at 1% and their and their inhibitors are starting to come back up. Do they just push mid now? I mean it's uh they, they, we got some long cooldowns on Noko side. Can they push straight through this mid and win this game right now? It's a possibility. But no no no, they have minions on their core. Oh no, no point two five percent mangoose! Oh, oh my no, gosh! No, 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 no. You're absolutely right, they're no, trying to back. They, oh they, my goodness. Shit or get up the pot, boys. Sparrow ended up backing to save their base. Oh my gosh. 0.25% on oh, that core. And it goes down. And it goes down. <laughs> Winions take the game. Amazing defense from Team Royalty. But unfortunately, they did not push all three lanes out to try and stay in this game. And the minions did end it. Ah, uh, man. I think... I. Yeah, I mean, somebody had to go back. I, I, I wanted to see them push through that mid lane and, and win it. That would have been an amazing game. But yeah, the, too many minions. You got those super minions rolling up. Nothing they could have done about that. Yeah, absolutely, Mangoose. Let's take a look at these graphs to see where our damage is coming from. Wow! These graphs of course, are gadget. insane. 53,000 coming from the gadget. 34,000 from Kalari. 36,000 from Revenant on Team Noko side. The damage was definitely in favor of Team Royalty, and we saw that coming through on those 5v5 team fights. But with the individual power that Team Noko had and the early lead that they gained with both the Prime Underlings and that early invasion, they were able to just keep that and move it forward game into a win. That was a really great game. I did not expect that that uh, that last stand. Like I was talking about how cool it would be, but I didn't expect it to actually happen. That was really good. Absolutely, Mangoose. Looks like we're taking a quick bio break from these teams and we'll get the next game started. Chat, how are we feeling about after game one? We think this is going to be an interesting set of three. Do we think Team Noko is just going to absolutely pull out two wins off the front? What are we thinking here? Kind of interested to see what the... Um what the bands are going to be this time is it going to be the same thing is it going to be face steel or is it going to be yeah i i completely agree mangoose actually i think it's going to be very interesting to see um <laughs> easy <man. laughs> i think it's gonna be very interesting to see if we see a muriel band come through here 
While Team Royalty did not win with that Muriel, Muriel definitely kept their, a lot of their teammates alive for a very long time in those team fights and was absolutely making a difference in there in those team fights. So I'm curious to see if we'll see a first pick of Muriel on Team Noko's side if they have first pick again, or if we're going to see a ban straight up. No, I was really impressed by the gadget. I was really impressed by the um, by the Kalari. There was there was a lot of impressive play in this, but uh, yeah, Noko kind of they they dominated early. They got that early lead with that invade, and then they just kind of kept pressing their advantage whenever they had it. That's yeah. such a tough front line. I mean, Grux and Feng Mao and Narbash. That's rough to try and uh, chew through, <laughs> especially as a Kalari. Yep, absolutely. And that's what we said, man. Was, even, despite that, Kalari is still performing very, very well in that team comp that is definitely against everything Kalari wants to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She was just having a rough time. When she got picked off, when she got stunned, it was just going to be a very difficult time for her to do anything else. I think my favorite play of that entire match was when Narbash came through the portal to cut off Kalari's escape. That was <laughs> so good. Uh, incredible, incredible team play from Team Noko there. Like we said at the time, right? The communication with your team saying, take the short portal because you're going to cut off Kalari. That's where she's trying to go. And then they pick up the kill afterwards even still. An incredible, incredible play. It's like we're just waiting on one more player to get back and we'll start off the second game of this set. Go back and look at that and watch Narbash's pathing as uh, as they went through that. <laughs> and, you know, I want to see him start, you know, Britain at that portal to try and make it in. I can't wait till they have a replay feature in these games so that we can get a, a better view and better replays of stuff like that. Absolutely. Uh, a replay system would be absolutely incredible, perfect for these kind of tournaments and these kind of leagues. Because then you're able to do exactly that. See where Narbash came from. See how some of these plays played out. See the minions and the uh, team pushing there at the end. And see who's going to win. Which one, which one's going to be able to make a play first. Just absolutely incredible. It looks, looks like, like ready up. we're, we're starting the game. all right well it looks like it's time for the spectator desk to pick a role all right everybody in chat pick what role the spectator desk is picking today are we going the solo lane the jungle the mid lane support or duo lane we'll lock it in right here and you'll be all here along for the ride the lane select doesn't really matter in this type of play but uh <laughs> Clearly, we're going Overseer. You know what? You're absolutely right. The Overseer class is definitely the one we're going right here. <laughs> oh, no, I'd forgotten about Overseer, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Oda's a steel trap. He doesn't forget anything. All right, let's see what this first ban is going to be for Team Noko this time around. Are we going to see the Muriel ban? Are we going to see the Fae come through one more time? It'll be very interesting one way or the other. It's interesting that they're on, they're on the same side. I would, there I would it like is. Them switch sides. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Muriel ban. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's probably the best ban you could have here. And if I was on team royalty side, I would probably be banning Steel either way. Uh, a Fae pick, very strong. Grux ban. Whoa. Ooh. Are we going to see a Steel first pick? Oh, no. The Fae is coming through for team Noko. Um, we of should see a steal make in. through on team uh, royalty for sure here. You would think so, but we'll see. A gadget first gadget. pick once again. Okay. I mean, gadget did do the really most damage in the last game. Gadget. She did the most damage in the last game by almost two times everybody else. So you, I, I will give it to them. They can play gadget all day long. And some of those gate plays were amazing. Like, like there was a gate kill in there. Yeah. You don't see people get killed with a gadget gate too very often. Let's see what's happening. Where will this pick be going? Let go on to Murdoch. So no prioritization of steel on there. So we can see a steel come through for Team Noko. 
as well as uh rampage coming through we can yeah, still rampage see is up, steals up yeah some really Revenant, big tanks Revenant coming up. out of team noko here there it is steel pick right off the top uh, i think letting that one go through was like letting muriel go through the last game for team noko <laughs> <laughs> Team, the Narbash pick early on. That, again, with Muriel off the table, Narbash is probably the next best support in the line. So they get the Steel pick up for that really, really strong tank and engage, and then they pick up the Narbash for that duo lane. I was surprised that they let the Fae through and did not get punished for it at all. They ended up getting her. That's crazy. Uh, I mean, the Fae is... I mean, she's still strong, even with the uh the redistribution of damage that they did the mages with their scaling and their early game damage the fey is still just stupid strong and uh she she gets to that mid game to where she's even stronger now yep really quick we see that revenant picked up and feng mao once again a little earlier uh, i mean they didn't really need to have any priority on that 80 carry pick because they saw the murdoch already come through so murdoch being the carry for team royalty means that they can kind of wait and pick Re uh revenant last and then pick whatever their more important picks like steel and narbash ahead of time i thought for sure we were going to see a rampage jungle come through here but instead it's going to be rampage solo lane and kalari jungle again on rom king i mean be, be laying it down with kalari um doing doing some amazing stuff uh landing all those daggers i i so so i guess rampage is gonna be solo lane yeah yeah I really love the phase new model too. I think it looks really good. Yeah, absolutely agree. All right, back in here with Team Noko and Team Royalty. Team Noko takes the first win of this series. We'll have to see where these teams go in the second game. Will we see another early invade that leads into a very early lead for Team Noko? Or will we see a little bit more safer play come out of everybody else? I'm kind of interested to see what this Kalari can do if she does have an opportunity to actually farm <laughs> at the beginning of the game and get a red buff. We already see the full five man waiting, making sure that if something happens again, they're there to take control. And the Rampage stun has been nerfed from two seconds to 1.5 seconds, but it is still an extremely long stun. And yeah, it looks absolutely. like uh, looks like Noko might be heading over to the blue buff. Trying to keep some eyes out. Decker also dropping a ward. So then now the wards are watching each other. We're going to see if something happens here. But it looks like they everyone may just go to their normal lanes. They don't want to risk it this time. They got the cheeky invade last game. And they don't want to risk it. Now they're just going to play the straight up normal team fights. Throughout the beginning of this early game. Or normal laning throughout the beginning of this early game. We say that and watch it. All of a sudden there's this. Uh, just <laughs> narbash picked up the speed boost first and they just beeline it into this red buff no it's uh Clark's gonna get a red buff no problem this time early on we saw this duel lane take a very early lead now they did have a lot of early kills but they were still just applying pressure way more than we were seeing at a team royalty in the duel lane rom king being a kalari in that red side jungle for royalty be something very careful to watch sprint mode getting knocked out roots coming through and the very quick heal coming out uh, from the Narbash. On the solo lane, though, we've got the Steel and Rampage duking it out. Now, this is going to be a rather boring lane, I think, Man Mangoose. <laughs> There's going to be two tanks slap fighting each other the whole time. Going to have to wait and see what happens. But Feng Mao able to go in the, to that blue side jungle. He is sitting on a ward, but doesn't know it. So they know he's there, but will be able to take away that blue buff from Kalari. I think he does know that he's sitting on a ward. He just doesn't care. Now, we know that uh, uh, Noko is not going to lose this lane. You're, you, you don't lose lane with Narbash. He just keeps that ADC so healthy throughout this entire phase. But uh, maybe if uh, Decker can land a, a really good stun out of nowhere, they can capitalize on that with the uh, Q damage from, from Murdoch because the Q damage from Murdoch, is, is, and they are dealing a lot of damage to, uh, to Revenant. But Revenant's Q disperses amongst the minions, whereas Murdoch's is just always a lock on. Yep, absolutely. And Kalari did actually counter steal that blue buff away from Feng Mao. Feng Mao's been farming her jungle, though, so she will be a little bit fewer minions, have a little bit fewer minions when she goes into that blue side jungle compared to when Feng Mao goes back. Back in the dual lane, though, we're seeing lots of two stuns coming out from both of the supports. Lots of damage going out on to Switch TV on the Murdoch. 
can switch make it out of there lots of damage going out Ooh, very very low but yeah, he will that's the body block for him i like to see that too whenever uh decker saw that her adc was stunned she stunned the enemy adc you don't see that enough yeah absolutely brilliant play in the mid lane we see this, a little bit of a skirmish here between the fey and gadget doing well but back in the duel lane kalari oh, coming in for kalari a great route in. on the narbash narbash taking less more and more damage but will probably be able to make it out of there root going out onto the narbash narbash goes down to murdoch oh, oh, oh. brilliant play from Kalari team royalty once again being so brave so brave Ooh, Narbat or Murdoch, very low though. Had yeah, to yeah, blink no. out to survive. He was almost dead to the minions right there. Is Rob King going to back or is he actually going to? No, yeah, he's just going to go ahead and back. Now back in the off lane again. We're seeing the boring lane come through here. This is the lane that you're playing for the end game. You've got big stuns on both sides, big engages on both sides. It's just very important to just farm up, stay alive. Let this lane play out the way it's going to play out. Now, this this gadget must be just a, a gadget expert because the Fae is just so good mid lane, but the, the gadget's actually holding her own. Right. Time to head back. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's look at these minions. 42 minions to 34. She's actually bullying the Fae off of her minions and able to take on more of them. This might be the case where um, Aesil just isn't practiced on the Fae because the fate is banned out so much and competitive mm -hmm. but uh, i think we'll see once the team fights start up uh the the fate will be extremely effective with that uh big aoe pull that Ooh, she has but good route from the kalari half health damage going out already brilliant good way to nice fade just got back dagger. into the lane and already has to leave but if we look in the dual lane dual lanes engaging again decker doing a great job body blocking we're going to have to see if something comes out of this. Kalari coming in from the Prime Spirit. Will they be able to make it out of here? Kalari can land a root on the Revenant. Revenant lands a root on Kalari through that stun coming from Narbash on Kalari. Kalari, Kalari taking a lot, a lot of, damage. of damage. And Narbash is healing up all of everything that's been done. Now we got Feng Mao coming through. Ooh, gets charged, gets but Revenant back, but will take enough. up the kill. Decker trying to get out of there. Can Revenant pick up a second one? Revenant does. That's a double kill for Revenant. Tanks going in. And trying to gonna be a triple, triple kill. Triple kill for Revenant. Gadget, though, coming through from the mid lane. Can Gadget make something happen here? Revenant very low. Has to blink out. Mine lands oh, on Revenant. Will go down. Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> no mana yeah, coming through. Nuts. Ooh, oh, the, the wow. They had to blink away. And Jeez. will he go down? He survives and Faye picks up a kill on Gadget. So that was a uh, four-four-one, Mangoose. Brilliant play from Team Noko, keeping their advantage alive. Back in the off lane, we see them both starting out with that Cetrita, Cetrica mask on both the Rampage and the Steel. Just basically going to be mirror match throughout the whole game. Every, it feels every like Mangus. Every time we go to the solo lane, I want I want the trombone music to play. I mean, the Faye got bullied out pretty uh, quite a bit, but she finally got her revenge on that gadget. So let's see if she can get back into this game now. Yeah, absolutely, Kalari coming in in Viz. Let's see. Can Kalari make something happen? She is level six, so she can land a beautiful ultimate here. She lands the root ultimate coming out. This will be a kill. And a mine on her head. Dead Fae. And Kalari actually gave that away to Gadget. She could have basics one more yeah, time to take that off. Fae. And she what a, hesitated. What a weird what a thing to see in a Kalari. Thing to do. Yeah, I would never see that from you. <laughs> never would Jelly D's back off and let somebody else get the kill. Heck no. <laughs> I don't trust my team to carry. I trust myself to okay, carry. Okay, we got Steel and Rampage and Kalari. Kalari, very low mana. Can't really do a hell of a lot, but it is a Kalari. Ooh, beautiful there. ultimate nice. coming through from the Steel. From yeah, Steel. you're right, Kalari, Steel very low mana. Low. Steel, very low. Lots of damage. Gadget also making it in there, and Gadget will get the kill on Steel, but Feng Mao picks yeah, up the Kalari. Making the difference. Can Feng Mao get out of this? Oh, picks up a double oh, kill. The execute. The execute. He negates and the he mine from the Gadget. Gadget he mine almost catches another Ooh, execute can he make He's it out extremely of here low. and uh, Faye came in to support and Faye is going to drive this gadget back and fig mal going to make it away with a sliver of health yeah absolutely. really nice fake mal play he timed those shields just mm, perfect <laughs> yeah kiss. i mean he was able to completely negate the damage out from that gadget uh mine and brilliant play because he would have died to it if he didn't 
we're seeing this pressure be applied on the prime underling once again will team noko pick it up rom king is already starting it but team noko is watching from the steel rampage coming over to support rom king it doesn't look like we're going to see a lot of rotation over. Feng Mao actually going to take the short portal across into the Prime Underling pit. There he is. Half health on the Prime Underling. 2v2 in the jungle right here. Can this turn into a fight? Fey coming in now. Faye brilliant. In. Brilliant in, play from the Fey. So Lots of low health targets here. Nice shield from Steel. That's Kalari trying to get out of there, but Kalari won't pick it up. It looks like we will and see this go over yeah, to Team Noko. And they secured it. Noko Co is very good at securing these early primes. That's for damn sure. Yeah, absolutely. A great ultimate coming out from the Narbash. Narbash getting knocked around, though. Needs to get out of there. Team coming in to support. Gadget Mine on top of Narbash's head. He does back up so his team doesn't take any damage. Thunk won't land from through. The, from the, Can Revenant pick something up here? Well, perfect. Lands the ultimate. Will pick up the kill. Gadget takes out the Narbash. Revenant takes out the Murdoch. Faye picks up a kill on, actually, the enemy Kalari in their jungle. Manages to pick that up, but the fight's not over. Rampage still going, or Revenant still going in. Rampage showing up with a rock. Perfect obliterate landing on that gadget. So much. Oh, Can we see that to, kill? Feng Mao picks up a kill on gadget. No dice. Great ultimate from that steel. It doesn't. Maybe we pick up another kill here. Let's see. Feng Mao able to go through that portal, and bam, picks, bam, picks up picks another up kill. This Feng Mao uh, pick, I had no faith in, but he's showing it's paying its dividends for Team Noko. He did take a snipe up the butt there, but uh, it wasn't enough to kill him. We're still They're seeing still it. They're fighting. They're re-engaging. Looks like everybody's decided that we're good. Nobody has to worry anymore. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the objective's gone. Everybody chill out. <laughs> we're not going to do what everybody thinks we're going to do. <laughs> Flip out, man. No towers down 10 minutes into the game. We do see that mini prime buff on Easy Ed on Steel. So we'll have to watch him where he's going to drop. It looks like they're probably going to go to a prime spirit to secure that prime spirit Looks hopefully like they, they learned really from like last game this on the prime spirit but they weren't very good at actually securing it with the mini prime <laughs> yeah that's what i was gonna say is hopefully they've learned from the last game and they can actually take it when it gets under 2k health then use the mini prime to make sure it executes i think they're trying to time it so that it lands exactly when it has 2k health and i think that's what's uh, not working out for them and you don't really need to there it is boom they, they learned. They, yep. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, you don't really need to time it. No smites doing 1800 damage. You can wait till after yeah, 2k. That's, <laughs> that's what I was trying to get at there. Uh, looks like they are going to push in with it, so they will actually get a tower off of it this time. Perfect. They're like learning from their mistakes. Last game already. Decker Cage coming through. Narbash ult. Perfect landing. Fay ult pulling everybody in. Decker will go down to the Revenant. We'll have to see if something else can happen here. Gadget trying to land out a lot of spells. Steel ult coming in will land on the Murdoch. Murdoch to go down here. Revenant ult goes out. But Kalari actually picks up a kill yeah, on the Feng Mao in the jungle. So she was able to pick up a kill there. Trying to even it out a little bit for Team Royalty. But Team Royalty rip, down two might, members. She needs to be very uh, cautious of this. <laughs> team Royalty down two members for Team Noko's one. Plus, they, Team Noko also picked up a tower and yeah, picked up the Prime Spear. The mines. Now, let's look at which Prime Spear this was. This was the Wind Spirit. So you're getting... Movement speed, attack speed, and cooldown reduction for every single one you get. Now, for Team Noko, this is not the best Prime Spirit for them to be picking up. It doesn't help a ton of their members. doesn't really do a lot other than that cooldown reduction for some of them. So, But denying it from Team Royalty is huge. The cooldowns on Team Royalty are much bigger deal. And the attack speed and the movement speed, way bigger deal for Team Royalty. So denying that from them is huge. A lot of people say Wind Spirit is probably the weakest uh, Prime Spirit. I think that might be true, actually. I would tend to agree. I, I think the biggest thing there is the cooldown reduction that benefits everybody. Yeah. And it is only 3%, so it's really not that much. I mean, the movement speed is nice, but you don't really notice it in this game that much. Oh, Faye is rooted out. Takes a gadget mine. Not dealing a whole hell of a lot of damage yet, but gadget gets rooted. We got Narbash. Posturing up, but he does take a mine on top of his head. He's going to have to back out. It did a lot of damage to Narbash. Holy crap, those mines. Oh, they hurt so bad. We see Solo Lane trying to become interesting. Feng Mao and Steel pushing it up under this Rampage's face. It's going to be interesting to see if they're able to take this tower from under him. The tower is still fairly healthy, but it looks like Narbash is, or Rampage is just going to give it away to them. Let them oh, take that tower. Oh, but behind him. Behind. 
brilliant he rampage is getting cut off let's see if this revenant takes the ultimate does not but picks up the kill Peng Mao also picks up the tower this is like a, this is a very different game noko is just take is just running away with it this time we saw some nice team fights and some nice rally ups from royalty last time it looks like noko has figured them out yeah two towers on the side of team noko versus no towers for team royalty thing that once again just immuning that gadget mind damage like it's nothing Oop, Kalari takes the blue buff right from under Feng Mao's Cheeky. nose. Will look like she's trying to get out of there, but she may get picked up by Narbash and Revenant. Revenant actually going to teleport across now that leaves Narbash hanging out to dry. But can Revenant make something happen? Kalari going in on Narbash. She this does not realize Feng Mao and the Fae are right there. This it's will be a fight bait. coming out on her. Oh, Gadgetal. Brilliant Gadgetal doing oh, a Gadget. lot of damage. The, the, the bait was reverse baited. Uh, incredible. How did Kalari live? How did Kalari live? It's it, Kalari still doing damage too. Can they take out this wow. Fing Mao? They can indeed. Uh, that's Kalari three for actually zero. Gets that kill on Fing Mao. Wow. Now, what we didn't see on the other side of the map is that the Murdoch and Revenant duked it out, and Murdoch did go down. So that was a three for one map wide, but in that fight for Team Royalty, that was three for zero. That gadget ult made all the difference right there. That was perfectly placed. I thought. That Kalari was getting baited in, but it looked like uh, maybe Kalari was the bait for the gadget. <laughs> Underling has spawned once again, and Noko is already posturing up for it. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a great thing for Team Noko to pick up. That dual lane inhibitor is already very low on health, or lower on health. So a prime spirit here, or a prime underling here, would be a very good pickup for Team Noko. But also, Team Royalty really needs it to pick up any towers at the moment. So anything was good here. Steel taking a lot of damage. Steel has to ult in, trying to get in there and do something for his team. The Murdoch getting knocked up into the air. Steel trying to survive. Murdoch will go down. Kalari, very, very low, needs to back out of this team fight. Rampage also trying to get out of there, but Rampage will get stunned and go down. Revenant trying to pick up more kills. Root going out on that gadget. Gadget going to take a lot of damage. That's a double kill for Revenant, which means this will be a free prime underling for Revenant Team Noko. Revenant is doing work. Now we got the heels coming out so that uh, I think Mal can participate in this fight a little bit more. You see, that Narbash healing is just so effective. You really got to get some sort of uh, heal reduction items to counter Narbash. Yep, absolutely, Mangoose. Let's see, we've got the Feng Mao is carrying that Prime Underling Orb. That is the second one for Team Noko. Let's see if they go with their uh, standard MO and try and drop it on the uh, Spirit. Or if they try and drop it into somewhere a little more effective and maybe take a tower. Yeah, if they do drop it on that Prime Spirit, they're going to see a 6% movement speed increase, a 10% attack speed increase, and a 6% cooldown reduction. And, I mean, they, when it stacks up, the, we did say it was the weakest, but a stacked buff is still way better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if uh, a Revenant doesn't normally build a lot of attack speed for his optimal build, he, he's mainly just damage. We've seen a lot of damage coming out from this Revenant. So that attack speed is just going to help him reload faster. So, I mean, it's not a bad bad buff for Revenant. No, not at all. A Rampage waiting in the bush. Gets the stun on Narbash. Leaps in. Counter stun from Narbash. And he just uh, speed boosts away. Prime Spirit is up, but nothing is really happening around it. They, Team Royalty is defending it really well. Kalari on the other side of the map is in, is invading, trying to steal some camps away. Face spots her, but can't really do anything for it. Let's see if anything can happen. Lots of wards out on the map. Shout out to Paragon, the overprime competitive, for setting uh, us up with this match because it's been an, a, a hell of a good couple of games so far. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we see the... Ooh, perfect. Great kill onto Murdoch there. Let's see over here. We're chasing down Narbash. Stun going down onto Narbash. But it looks like the teams are grouping up around this. Narbash going to get actually picked up by Kalari. Ooh, be beautiful stun. Root goes out, but Kalari will pick up the kill. Uses her ultimate on Narbash. That's a ballsy move. They're going to be able to pick up that Kalari pretty easily now. No ultimate to save her in terms of damage. But the Revenant picks up a kill on Gadget, and the rest of Team Noko picks up that Kalari. That Narbash with the sixth sense there, bursting out of that bush and immediately dunking Kalari. <laughs> hey, Mangoose, he sees dead people, okay? That's all that matters, even <laughs> if they don't know they're dead yet. 
Prime Spirit coming through. That will be the second one for Team Noko. Mini Prime coming out and heading toward that mid lane. The only freestanding tower left for Team Royalty probably will go down right here. Now, I like how they did that. They pulled the, the Prime towards mid lane so that when they dropped the, uh, the well, they pulled Spirit towards mid lane so that when they dropped the Underling, it would actually go to the tower that they needed to take out. Incredible work. Lots of damage going out on that Prime Underling. Will it hit the tower? It will not unfortunately but they still managed to break down that last tower they left it out there oh we do see something potentially gonna happen here switch is gonna get caught out by three members of team noko Ooh, switch is gonna have out. a very hard time getting out of this three people and that's just gonna be a dead murdoch man he keeps trying to push up these lanes and uh paying for it pretty hardcore yeah i mean getting caught out is the kill difference right now between these two teams 11 kills for team royalty and 22 kills for team noko this is a very much uh, bigger game for Team Noko, and the snowball is much larger for Team Noko in this game as well. With the amount of wards they have, Kalari may just may as well not have stealth. <laughs> Tesla Dome, good to Gadget go. trying to make sure they're not going to collapse on her if she turns that corner, trying to keep this lane alive. <laughs> Kalari trying to push down a mid lane tower, trying to get something for her team, but the Team Noko Feng Mao will be there to defend. He'll be there for you, okay? Don't worry about it. Rampage Rock coming out, hitting the, that Revenant, getting Kalari <laughs> out of Dodge. Come, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> he threw that rock from way back there. Always fun to see a nice Rampage Rock coming out of nowhere to stun people. Absolutely. The Prime Guardian has now spawned. Steel to nearby on a ward, though. Can something happen here? Gadget drops down. Looks like, are we going to see, oh, Narbash actually takes the short portal across into the prime pit, trying to clear out some wards, placing some great wards. For those of you that are in your games, the ward in the pit is very, very effective. Don't get me wrong, but the ward behind the pit in that bush is almost more effective. You have vision it on does the see through that wall. Yep. You have vision on the prime guardian. It's not easily cleared by wards in the pit, which means that you're getting the best of both worlds and a lot of information for your money. Looks like they might be trying to get... Oh, Murdoch is out by himself again. And he's getting sandwiched by this team. Tried to blink Oof. away. He nice buckshot, but it's not enough as Brevin picks up that kill on Murdoch. Poor Murdoch. Every time he steps foot outside of a tower, he gets collapsed on. 14, 1, and 3, Mangoose, on that Revenant. This Revenant is Oof. not going to be a slouch. 15, 1, and 3. I apologize. Um... <laughs> incredible work from these teams feng mao in that fight against murdoch though just let him he didn't attack him he didn't use any abilities he's like i'm letting my revenant take this he, he can get all the gold he needs now they're going to rotate over to this uh prime i don't think royalty can do anything i don't think uh may, maybe a last ditch steal from glory maybe but glory is dead for another 14 seconds and the no, Rampage does have Smite, so if he can in. pull off some kind of cheeky Smite steal here, it'll be very interesting. Can he do it? 1,000? Oh, which team did it go to? It did go to Team Noko. Ultimate yeah, going no, out no, on no, that no, Rampage. No. Rampage going down to Revenant once again. Uh, a <laughs> Rampage valiant effort, 100%. He got it within 100 health with that Smite, but unfortunately, it was not enough. Yeah, he blinked in for that too, which was, which was nice. It was a, it was a, like like you said, good effort, but uh, unfortunately, didn't do much for him. Now, uh, Noko with all the advantages this time. Yeah, absolutely. Noko is full towers, up fourteen kills, has all the inhibitors at half health or less on Team Royalty. Like they are just manipulating this game. They have both Prime Spirits. They've got the Prime Guardian. They had both Prime Underlings. They are destroying in this game. And they're just uh, walking around the map with impunity. The they're sticking together really well. I'll, 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 I'll give them that. I yeah, mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's at the point in the game where you need to be sticking together. You can't just be out solo pushing lanes. We saw this in the first game, Mangus, that they had a lot of individual players. They had a lot of individual heroes that are good by themselves and they're okay in team fights. This time around, we've got a huge disadvantage for Team Royalty. 
because not only do they have a fed revenant they also have the team to help him out they've got the narbash the steel the feng mao in there like they are just doing the right things in the right ways as a team this time not just individual players yep their frontliners are getting in their face and revenant is putting them down see do we see the shield come out and we do <laughs> every time uh, interesting thing, Kalari is across the map, not with her team. If something happens here, she is not anywhere near a fight breaking out. Stealing blue buff away from Team Noko. I'm pretty sure blue buff is the least of Noko's worries right now. <laughs> oh no, they got our blue buff. Whatever shall we do? But we see a prime spirit coming up now. Faye already picking it up, trying to pull it away from that center area. Feng Mao going in. We're going to see this would be the third prime spirit team royalty not really in a position to come and attack it they're gonna try though half health on that wind spirit will it go down for team noko one more time it will that will be third prime spirit and um we, we've seen that royalty can mount a pretty good uh defense but uh i don't know if they can when they're this far behind but that revenant is so far ahead Murdoch able to pick they up a kill on up Feng Mao. Revenant getting Feng a kill Mao. on the Kalari, though. Revenant picking up a second kill on Rampage. Steel going in, trying to box out that gadget now. Can Revenant make it in there? Revenant ults the gadget. Will pick up a triple kill on gadget. Uh, so far, I mean, that is three for one for Team Noko's favor. Minions are up at that middle inhibitor. We're going to see this. No problem mid inhib go down here. Revenant just hitting so hard right now. Uh, they and. They have that was their third prime spirit mangoose, meaning they're getting a nine percent cooldown reduction, fifteen percent attack speed, and nine percent movement speed, and that's a huge buff for, for the team Noko here. I right, Noko performed well the first match, but this match is just it's like a completely different team. Yeah, their coordination is just through the roof. Uh, again, Revenant twenty oh, God, kills. Revenant, what's his build, man? What? Uh, oh, he just got stunned as he's walking away. Full crit and Cedar's chainsaw. Like it just, yep, I mean, that's that. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic job from Team Noko here, and especially D Lock on this Revenant. And he's still getting fast reload times because of all these wind spirits. Yep, so it's absolutely. Not like, it's not like he's losing out by building full crit damage right now. And here we go. The blue buff was taken by Kalari, but the red buff was taken by Team Noko. So it evens out in the end. Feng Mao fighting out that Kalari. Kalari not able to do much with her ultimate. We did see this game. Ooh, a Feng Mao coming out on nice him. Nice ult. Brilliant play there. Steel ult coming through. Pick up the double kill on Feng Mao. Gadget ult coming through on Feng Mao. Feng Mao very low. Steel very low. But this at the end of the day, right Revenant's just showing up to the fight. So this fight's just beginning. Revenant's going to be able to... Oh, blink out from the gadget. Gadget will get out of there. Revenant is going to not pick up a third kill here or another kill here. But instead, we'll just scare them off. That's two inhibitors down for royalty. Now they got those super minions pushing in. The super minions have won the game for her, Noko last match. Now, there's not much that they can do right now. There's not, I mean, they're posturing up, but uh, they just got to look for a pick or something. It, it's it's this is the the downside of overprime is this late game lull where you're just waiting for objectives to spawn yeah but i mean team noko has done everything even outside of those objectives they just took two inhibitors they took the prime spirit yeah. they they are not slowing down just because the, because the game is in a lull if anything they're still speeding up feng mao no cares just going still straight in there fighting this gadget kalari even next to him but he doesn't even realize whole team rotating over to that solo lane they know this is the only inhib that isn't down so we're gonna take this one looks like they're pursuing kalari through the through the jungle that's got to be tilting for this gadget every time she mines that feng mao every single time he hits shield <laughs> and just doesn't take anything from it Being sneaky. Wow, that damage oh onto Decker. God, Revenant. <laughs> oh, that is so disheartening to take that much damage that fast. And Revenant did sell his blink. He's got now the emergency treatment. Does not have blink anymore, so he can't get through this wall. He will have to back off. But if we look at Team uh, Noko, they're already taking Prime. Revenant's just the distraction crew at this point. Feng Mao and Steel taking Prime. Revenant's back there hanging out. What are they going to do? They're not going to push onto a Revenant and Narbash especially. They're trying, but the, I mean, Prime Guardian's already down to quarter health, 3,000 health. 
Can they do a 2,000 health? 1,000 and ultimate comes out on oh, Rampage. Yep. Prime Guardian goes down 40% on the core and Revenant picks up yet another kill. That's usually Revenant's job in these uh, high competitive <coughs> games is to take out the smite. Is when they come in to try and smite, you go ahead and ult to whoever has the smite so that they can't use it. But uh, this game, he's just so far ahead that he can do whatever the hell he wants. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, takes out the Murdoch in three shots. Oh. Takes out the inhibitor. Gadget trying to run away. They can just end the game, but they're chasing down the gadget instead. Oh, Decker oh my down. god. Two hits Again. takes out the Decker. Oh. 22, 1, and 6 on that Revenant. Just insane. And 24% on the core. This will be the game for Team Noko, and this will be the set. Nicely Boom. done. Noko takes it. Uh, I'm not sure how the brackets are going to work. We'll learn that as we go through with these games. These, like, like I said, there are going to be. Uh, this is going to be every Saturday night, and they're going to do it um, 12 uh, weeks. So we're we're going to see more of this coming out, and we're going to see more uh, more gameplay. Uh, I believe we're going to see Noko uh, pretty high in the standings. <laughs> they, they they really uh, they they brought their A game tonight, and they laid it down. Look at the amount of gold that that Revenant has. Yeah. Holy shit! He has six thousand more gold than the highest person on the other team. Just destroying five full items, working on his sixth. I mean, of course, we're gonna see these graphs, and he's just gonna, yeah, no chance. Oof. Forty-two thousand damage, right? He's almost four times most other players in the game. Gadget, the only one even close to comparable. So, just incredible play from these teams. Team Noko pulling it out. Congratulations, Team Noko, on your win tonight. Uh, and just again, incredible gameplay. Uh, Triceracop, uh, I don't think we have that really set up this time around, but uh, uh, maybe next time. Uh, Jelly, Jelly needs to give Ed a post-game interview. Yeah, sure. I'll, we'll give Ed a post-game interview. Sure. All right, let's see where he is. Find him in Discord here. Hopefully, is he in the FTM Discord with us? I uh, don't think so. I'm checking the uh, Paragon Competitive League. Uh, we maybe we can go into Noko's channel. All right. Uh, let's, see. Uh, let's see if I. Everybody, hello. We're here for the post-match interview. <laughs> All right, what do you what do you got for us? I mean, easy Ed. So you guys picked up that steal first pick or second pick, actually that second game. Uh, I mean, what was your thoughts and pick bands for both yeah, of these I, games? I just I just don't know. I mean, they're they're gonna give us steal. I mean, that's like Biden's America. That's free as can be. So I just <laughs> I just don't quite understand why they're gonna give that away. But all right, sounds good. You know. Yeah, I was really surprised to see them give that up. Uh, I, I, was just, I was surprised to see them give the Faye up, too. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> you guys yeah, did ban the Faye, and then they just didn't pick it? I was like, what is going on here? Yeah, a lot of questionable things tonight. I don't know. Either I, I don't know what was worse, the, them giving us Steel and Faye, or me giving up uh, some nice nights at the bars with some ladies that I hook, line, sinkered on and came here to play video <laughs> games. Son of a bitch. I mean, hey, <laughs> you close fine. those games out really fast. You can still yeah, go I catch close. up with them. Yeah, no, it's too late. Probably someone else zoomed in, but it's fine. 2-0, baby. That's what matters, you know? Well, guys, I mean, congrats on those wins. They were clean games, both front to back. And, I mean, the first game, you guys had that great invade. Second game, you just started on a roll and just kept that movement going. Big momentum. I don't know. Like Steel Glide, you know? You just can't stop it. <laughs> were you a little worried that first game, though, uh, when they mounted that defense, when their core was at 1%? Yeah, my Dang. controller fucking died right before that. All of ours oh. did, and I don't know what happened. Oh, no then, shit. Uh, yeah, here we are. Now 2-0. It is what it is. I don't know. Those those minions just kind of decided, like, ooh, piece of candy, and they just kind of stopped mid-thing, and they're like, well, we're just going to get some style points here real quick. We'll stack our, D or our, our uh, stat padding, and, you know, then they went and got the finish for us. So it is what it is, you know? <laughs> Great games all around. Great gameplay. Uh, like, like seeing the Grux. The Grux was uh, really good. I, I can understand why they banned him out. Um 
That was a targeted ban right there, though. Yeah, yeah. I was I was flattered, but still upset with these guys. But it's fine. It's it is what it is. Can't be too upset if they gave you steel for it, though. So yeah, I would have rather had my other night go through, but it is. I'll take this. You know, at least I'm slamming something. So all right. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I appreciate the games. Uh, it was really fun to watch. And uh, yeah, uh, congratulations to you guys. Yeah. All right. Good thanks, job, buddy. guys. Man, goo. Oh,